Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> Uh, Michael said, Gary does have that big ass TV on display. Yeah. It's not a big one. It's, uh, Woo! it's 40 some like, inches, baby. <laughs> uh, you got that killer light behind it too, though. That's, 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 that's why I got a good the, look. I put the light on so that there is at least something behind me. Right. So, Cause that's you got look. your thing. Mine's all the way in the back of the, the thing. But, uh, but yeah, I want the, you know, I want a little thing showing up here and there, like some kind of display going <laughs> on. Uh, here we go. Hawkeyes coach Kirk Ferentz announced Saturday that Chris Doyle, the strength and conditioning coach, long-time coach, I believe 21 years. Been um, there for a while. He uh, he was put on administrative leave pending an independent review uh, after a growing group of former football players spoke out about negative experiences they and other black players had at Iowa under Doyle's supervision. Uh, he has led Iowa's strength and conditioning program since 1999, spanning Ferentz's entire tenure as head coach. He is the nation's highest-paid strength coach, earning $800,000 annually. Um, so, we did hear a lot of this stuff coming up, you know, Thursday, Friday, into Saturday. You get more information coming out. You're trying to figure out what is, like, what is the deal? Matt Miller said, no cap, guys. So, yeah, I don't think we're capping, if that's what that means. But <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, the Iowa football stuff is interesting. Doyle came out. And he he said in his statement, right, and he, he put out, you know, the generic, um, you know, for 21 years I've committed my life to Iowa football, blah, 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 blah. So we'll go through all that. Uh, and then he, he put this at the end of it, which I think is interesting, and he released this on his Twitter. He said, I have been asked to remain silent, but that is impossible for me to do. There have been statements made about my behavior that are not true. Uh, I do not claim to be perfect. I have made mistakes. I learned lessons, and like every American citizen, can do better. At no time have I ever crossed the line of unethical behavior or bias based upon race. I do not make racist comments, and I don't tolerate people who do. I am confident that a complete review of the body of work over 21 years will speak for itself, and I am trusting the process to respect the rights and experiences of all parties involved. There are countless men of character who are better fathers, husbands, activists, leaders, and contributors to society due to their experience at Iowa football, the record will show that. Uh, that is, that's pretty crazy. It's coming uh, out saying I didn't do this, and I trust that it's, you know, it's going to fare out that way. So. Oh, it, uh, hold on. Uh, so one, Michael said for your action figures, uh, Michael, he said his son would give you at least five bucks a piece. Um, yeah. And then Matt Miller jumped in and said, no, cap means you're serious, uh, not lying. Or no cap means you're serious, not lying. Capping means the opposite. It's stupid. So, yeah, we're... We're not capping. We're so old right now. God. I feel I feel really old having this conversation. Here we go. Ben Ben said he's out of there. No cap. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know that he's out of there. Like I'm I'm really I'm confused about this. Uh, this is what Kirk Ferentz said about it. When you feel like you're being wrongly accused of some things, you want your day to voice your side of things too. Uh, I can appreciate that. Just like our players, I'm not here to muzzle anybody or tell them what to say or what not to say. My biggest takeaway is we've got to listen harder. We've got to ask harder on certain questions and topics. Um, it, let's see. Uh, Deontay Morrow, who tweeted Sunday, Doyle made a comment about sending him back to the ghetto. I called him out on it in front of the entire team. I was suspended. Ferentz told me I was out of line and needed to apologize for standing up for myself. Uh, so it, it comes into... Ferentz's thing. Ferentz said, I'm not saying it's true or not. I don't remember Chris using that word. I've never heard Chris use that phraseology. Um, I I don't know what to think about this situation. Like, obviously, you know me. I like Kirk Ferentz. I like that program. It is it's the longest tenured coach in NCAA football. Yep. I like the way that they build their programs. I do, too. I do, too. But, and, and, they had, and listen, they had a coach come out. And give unbelievable testimony for, A, the change that has happened at Iowa since he's been there and the progress and what they're working towards. Um, and, and, and that coach, we are close to. I am personally close to, yeah. or was, in Kelvin Bell. I that, that guy beat me up every day in football. And not physical, not bully, but I was the guy that had to hold the tackling dummy across from him. And he was an All American, and I was a bum. I was a sophomore, and I just got the hell beat out of me. Every I was just the fattest sophomore they had, and they were like, "He he can beat him up." Yeah, he so, played at Iowa. He, ben jumps he, in. What type of dog is that? That is a Great Dane. Uh, that is a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, Ben also said if they don't fire the strength coach, expect recruiting to flop. Uh, here's the thing: 
recruiting is already doing insane. I mean, they've got a top 10 class right now. So yeah. I don't expect it to necessarily flop. I, I, I don't know what to make of this. I have no idea what's going on there. Like, I, I, would, I would tell you this. You and I have been in, uh, in and around enough football guys, okay? And, and definitely enough white football guys to know, I think there's ma- – this is going to sound terrible. I'm almost afraid to even say this, but I really believe this. The fact that him telling somebody, if you screw up here or whatever, you're going to get sent back to the ghetto, that's, that's massive progress compared to what used to be said in locker rooms. Yeah. Like, yeah, yes, it's not okay, and we got it, but we're 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 getting there because a hell of a lot worse than that has been said, and is probably still being or probably not now because of the voice players have today that they didn't used to have, and if it is being said, you're gonna get your butt called out on it, and you should, but but I'm just saying that I I think that is that's that's if not excuse if it was said, it's yeah. not the. It's not the worst thing in the world. At some point in time, we can't make every word the 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 button that gets you fired. It can definitely get you your ass chewed. It can definitely get you suspended. It can put you in trouble. Okay. Yeah. It can put you on notice and on blast that we're all watching you. All yeah. right. That's a type of probation. But but losing your livelihood and not being able to apologize and learn from these things. I truly and honestly believe Drew Brees spoke out of turn. Okay. He said what he really believed. And then he listened instead of just thinking what he thought he had enough people pull him aside and say, what you think is wrong. And it changed his mind. That's one thing I tell, I hate the yelling and the screaming because the yelling and screaming is never going to change someone's mind. Right. But, but bringing them in and saying this is how we really feel and this is how it really is will actually change these people. Yes. It really can modify the way they believe and see the world, and that can make it a better place. I don't know that this is shoot him in the head and move on, you know, let him just well, put out I, the pasture. I, I don't know that that is the only thing that has been said, and that's kind of the problem. But true. Right? That's, no, that's no, we need – We yes, um, you're exactly right on that. It's not excusing what he said in the slightest – no. Um, but it, yeah, I, I would say that progress has been made. Um, Michael said, I'm from the ghetto. I've never thought of that as racist. We just didn't have any money growing up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, uh, Matt Miller said, my biggest issue with the whole movement is people act like progress hasn't been made. And this is the same culture as the fifties and sixties. Uh, I think the, the issue right now is that in not enough progress has been made and, and that's what people are standing up. Well, and there are certain about. big, big things that they yeah. want changed. Okay. That, that we all should want changed. Well, I guess we all, there's a, a large portion of people that don't think that that qualified immunity should be changed. And that's, that's fine. But that's what, that's, that's the linchpin that will change. Are we going forward? Are we staying the same in the eyes of the majority of everyone that is protesting right now? Right. Right. Um, I, Again, I don't know what to make of this. I am wait and see, and I mean, we'll I grew. I, so happens. I, I grew. I grew up. Okay, I before, before my, my mom and moved my brother and I in with our grandparents growing up. We we lived in what would be called the ghetto. We lived in in the project area of Memphis in White Haven. That's where we lived, and it was a it was a rough place to live. And I wouldn't. We weren't the only white family there. But it was predominantly black, and it was it was a ghetto. It was a project. I don't I don't know any other way to say it. That's what it. That's where I lived, and and you know we weren't mistreated. We were, I mean, everybody lived kind of a rough, poor life there. That's that's just the way of life in that area, in that neighborhood. It was rough and it was poor, and and people people struggled to to make ends meet. Um, but but I don't know. Now I'm also my mom moved us in with our grandparents, which got me out of it. But I also lost having my own bedroom. And now I sleep on the floor at the foot of my mom's bed. And it was a different lifestyle, but they, they got us out of there. We no longer lived in a house with bars on the windows. And that was nice. And I lived a pretty decent childhood, but it, I don't, I just, I wouldn't have thought the word ghetto was offensive. I, I do understand how it can be and probably is to most black people. I, I yeah. 100% get that. It just, 
because I, I did live a portion of my childhood there. I didn't, I didn't think that was one of those words that that's their word, not our word. Yeah. Because, because I, I live there too. Uh, Matt said the problem with real change is it's hard and takes time. And these people protesting need to realize this is a movement that is possible, but not instantaneous. Uh, yes. Agreed. But you, you would still like to see more progress made. And that's, that's what they're pushing for. It, it obviously won't happen overnight, but nope. you know, uh, one of the other things, Terrence Pryor, former Hawkeyes linebacker said, uh, that black athletes had to deal with many racist incidents during his time there, including an incident with Doyle in which he alleges the strength coach told him, maybe you should take up rowing or something you know. Oh, wait, black people don't like boats and water, do they? Um, so yeah, if this guy has a history of making black jokes, that's probably not good. Probably not like, good. Th- that, that might be a situation where, all right, thanks for the 21 years of service. You're, you're going to have to go. Uh, former Iowa defensive back Emmanuel Rogamba, who transferred to Miami, Ohio, alleged two instances involving Doyle in which he mocked black athletes and, as a result, quote, made you walk around the football facility on eggshells and caused anxiety that could be unbearable at times with your dreams and career on the line. Um, yeah, you, you can't. Yeah, it's, you, you, I, I'm all for being hard on players. I really am. You, you got to be hard on everybody, and you can't make, you can't make well, cultural and you, you insensitive can't, jokes. Yeah, you can't. You can't no, you separate can't. people. No, we just we just can't be that anymore. Yeah. You can be you can be a mean cuss, but you got to be the same mean cuss to everybody. Yep, and and maybe he was, but the way that he was going about it, because well, obviously we weren't there. You can't make. But you we can't live make in a world references. where you can't make black jokes and then turn around and make white jokes and say, "Well, I made fun of both of them." No, 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 no. that's that's it's also different. not how it works either. Yeah, it's it's it, and that's what I'm saying is it you can't. So yeah, there's a, okay. There might be more to it than what I what I thought. So, So, and that's, that's the only ones that are listed out in these articles. I've read three different ones. Those are the only ones that I've come across. Do you think Um, this is going to end up with Kirk having to leave? Because I mean, I'll say this, uh, Kirk Ferentz said that he was blindsided by these accusations and all that kind of mess. He's been your strength and conditioning coach since 1999. You cannot tell me that you didn't know what was going on in your strength program. Yeah, that's the one guy. Think about Nick Saban and, and Scott Cochran. No, we talked that about this. Guy. That guy has more power than any position coach or maybe coordinator than anybody else. Uh, more than anybody on the team aside from the head coach. The the strength coach. Uh, no, even gets, more than the head coach. More than the head coach. They yeah. know the players more than the head coach knows the players. Because they're around them. I that. that. Because they, the players are allowed to be around the strength coach more than they are their position coach or coordinators or the head coach. That's yep. just the way it goes. So it uh, it works. Michael said these comments should never be made, but why wait until now to bring it up? You can't have change if it's not being reported when it's happening. Well, it, it, this is simple. Uh, it, everybody feels comfortable with coming out right now. Uh, if you had come out before, it, you lose your spot, you lose whatever. I, let's talk. I, I meant to bring up the social media policy. We have spent forever on these two topics today. Um, that's okay. We'll, we'll roll through the other ones. Um, we don't have a whole lot else. So that's no. okay. Uh, the social media policy that Adam Rittenberg from ESPN pointed out, Iowa had a social media policy where you were only allowed to use social media. You could get one pre-approved tweet each week. That's all you could post. That blew my mind. Now, obviously, that social media policy they announced has been done away with, but you had to send it to the coaches to get it approved. Before you could actually post something, otherwise you'd I'm not, get in trouble. I'm, all, I'm, I'm almost not against that because social media is just, we we have to be a part of it and we share it out and all our people are watching us on social yeah. and I appreciate it and I love it and I understand its place, but it's also one of the worst places in the world. Yes, 100. percent And it's where kids get in trouble. Well, it, I'll, I'll it say just this: is. instead of pre-approving, you either have no social media policy. Yeah. Uh, where, like a, a no, excuse me, a no social media policy, or you just let them run free and do what they want to do and trust your players. And that's, it's, yeah, I'm other. with you. I, I would rather have a thing where once a month we're going to talk about the dangers of hitting send, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to replay the message from, from, uh, Herm God, Edwards, her, Herm, Herm, a boy, uh, or was it know, Tony Dungy from was years Tony ago Dungy or Herm Edwards? It was Herm Edwards. It, it was, was Herm, Herm Edwards. Yeah. That's it. But like, we're gonna, you know, d- be careful with hitting sin. Be careful with with what you share out in the world into the ethos because it never comes back. 
somebody's going to grab yeah, it. It's and always going to be there. For, it's going to live forever. Even if you try to delete it real fast because you regret it, it doesn't matter. Somebody's got that thing screenshot it and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, I think that is smart. I think that is wise to teach 18 year olds, 19 year olds, 20 year olds. I don't think that the, that's a problem, but having looked, I wouldn't want to have to approve these things. You got 150 college students that play football that yeah. are under your, and I'm not going through all 150 tweets a week. If everybody gets one, it's 150 a week. I got to read. And, and, and if 80% of them are about, you know, some, you know, crazy pizza thing that they saw or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't get, like, I just, I'm not doing this. Well, the I'm Brown Yeti, the Brown Yeti jumps in and said, that's also taking away their first amendment. I understand it, but I don't agree with it. And that, yeah. I think a lot of people would not agree with it, but a lot of people would understand your side of it. Right. And, and my side is either well, no, I, my side either is all or none. Yeah. Yeah. My side, side is, is educate, educate them. And edu- yeah. You can make it. I'm not okay with the policy. I think that's kind of a bad way to do it. It's, it's just not practical more than no. anything else. Um, Cause then like, what, what about likes? What about retweets? Like what do I have to get all those approved too? Like at some point in time, we're making this bigger than it really needs to be. Educate them on just not saying stupid things that they might regret. later. Exactly. Don't, don't that's, retweet something that you're going to regret. Don't, you know, or, and, and just have a blanket rule that, you know, if you embarrass the school, then at some point in time, now that's a hard thing to well, judge. It's like an ethical now it's clause, a gray right? area. Yeah, it's it, that. Then you get into a gray area. It is what it is. Um, yeah. Let's move on to our next topic: uh, the NFL. Uh, 